Today is the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. I'm going to be back here again in Denver. In the epistle for this 23rd Sunday after Pentecost is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 3, and also chapter 4. Brethren, be ye followers of me, and observe them who walk so as you, and so as you have our model. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now I'll tell you weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things, but our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, who will reform the body of our lowness, made like to the body of his glory, according to the operation whereby also he is able to subdue all things unto himself. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and most desired, my joy and my crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved, I beg of, a, of Avodia, and I beg, and I beseech Sintuche, to be of one mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, my sincere companion, to help those women who have labored with me in the gospel with Clement, and the rest of my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. In the gospel, we take that according to St. Matthew, chapter 9. At that time, as Jesus was speaking <coughs> to the multitudes, behold, a certain ruler came up and adored him, saying, Lord, my daughter is even now dead, but come, lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus, rising up, followed him with his disciples. Behold, a woman who was troubled with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I shall touch only his garment, I shall be healed. But Jesus, turning and seeing her, said, Be of good heart, daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman <clears throat> was made whole from that hour. And when Jesus was come into the house of the ruler and saw the minstrels and the multitude making a tumult, he said, Give place, for the girl is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. And when the multitude was put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. And the fame thereof uh, went abroad into all that country. Those are the words we gave before we go. So this is the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost, but also 31 days from now, be December the 8th, Feast of the Immaculate Conception. <clears throat> and so <coughs> on that day, there, there are seminary, Lady Mount Carmel Seminary in Boston, Kentucky, and will consecrate the seminary and the seminarians. <clears throat> to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and make a family consecration of the seminary and all those also who have consecrated their families to the Sacred Heart. It will be a good time to renew that consecration. We'll do a full formal consecration of the seminary to the Sacred Heart. So <clears throat> tonight is the eve before the first day. And then tomorrow morning begins the first day of the prayers and the, the 30 days of prayers before the creation <clears throat> of the seminary, the seminarians, and the family. To the Sacred Heart of Jesus. So today, a few considerations on this uh, consecration of the Sacred Heart. One in the Father and the Son goes to men, taken from especially from Ludolf of Saxony. And Ludolf was a Capuchin, a Carthusian monk who lived in seclusion of the, of the strictest monastery of the Church, who lived in the 1300s. We are we have brought on. He died in the late 13 mid 1300s. And Ludolf spoke of the devotion. To the side of our Lord Jesus Christ. We learn the name of our devotion. They call the devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus. From St. Margaret Mary Alacoque a couple of hundred years ago. 300 years ago. When our Lord Jesus Christ appeared to her. And asked her that the people. The France would consecrate itself to its sacred heart. Later on other countries and families. And a great devotion to his sacred heart. But the original name of this devotion was. The devotion to the wound and the holy side of Jesus Christ. And Ludolf, the great monk of uh, 700 years ago, spoke about this great devotion and that, uh, that the importance of this side of Jesus Christ. 
that our Lord Jesus Christ is five wounds. There are five wounds of our Lord, and four of the wounds make him immobile. Four of the wounds nail him down to one place. For he has a nail in his hand, and another nail in his other hand, and he has a nail in his foot. And the right and left foot are nailed to the cross, and the hands are nailed to the cross. In his hands they cannot move, and his feet they cannot move. And furthermore, he has decided that he shall hang upon that cross until the ending of time. He hangs upon the cross every time we commit a sin. He hangs upon the cross every time there is an effect of sin in this world, and there shall be sin in this world until the very last day when it shall be wiped out. And therefore, Jesus Christ hangs upon the cross. His hands, they cannot move. His feet, they cannot move. And so what is our Lord Jesus Christ saying? He says several things, one of which is, If I be lifted up, I shall draw all things to myself. There is some kind of magnet inside of Jesus Christ. There is some kind of magnet that calls the very extremities of the universe to be pulled towards him. This magnet is found only inside the side of our Lord Jesus Christ. And also Ludolf tells us, remember that this man, he chose to be crucified on top of the rock of Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. It is not the place of any skull, but it is the skull of Adam. When Jesus Christ lay upon that cross at 3 p.m., he fell asleep. He was dead. And the new Adam was dead, lying upon the cross, just above the skull of Adam, the old Adam, whose body is dead and corrupt, and inside of that rock. Jesus Christ, Adam was buried in that hill, and his bones were encapsulized inside of the rock of Golgotha, the place of the skull of Adam where Adam was buried the father of the whole human race. And Jesus Christ chose to die on top of that very place where Adam was crucified, where Adam died. But also consider this, says Ludolf. In the beginning of time, God created a most beautiful thing. And it is called Eve. He created something most wonderful. But before he could create this most wonderful thing called Eve, he required that man be created first, and Adam was created first. He then told Adam, this whole world is for you. All the stars and all things are for you. Go out and work this world and name this world as you see fit. Name all the animals, take care of this garden, and rule the earth. And Adam had no sin in him. Adam had no imperfection in him. He had no pride, no vice of any kind. He was filled with the knowledge and love of God and the greatest of virtue, and he went out and saw the world. He saw how beautiful it was and how wonderful it is. And he came back to God, and he thanked him for the wonderful world that he had made. But then he said to God, There is no creature like unto myself. There is something missing in Adam. And God wanted Adam to see that. He wanted him to see that I made you a wonderful world. And I made you to rule this world. And I made you to go out on this world. And it's wonderful and beautiful. And you have no vices in you. You have no imperfections. But you're still missing something, aren't you? And Adam came back to God and he said, I am missing something. There is no creature like unto myself. And what is it that Adam wanted to do? He could find no creature in which he could pour himself out. Now two things were required before he could pour himself out. The first was, he had to put in the day's work. Even though work was not difficult for him, he had to go out and work. And so Adam went out, and he named the animals. He looked at the earth, he took care of the garden. It was very easy. He came back from his work, and he was tired. Therefore, he had to put in a day's work before this beautiful thing called Eve could be created. And then secondly, he had to sleep. And so God put him to sleep, and he slept a deep sleep. And in a deep sleep, what happened? God drew from his side that most beautiful creature called Eve, from which all human life comes. The mediatrix of all life, 
and all the mysterious creatures that walk this earth, which we call men, that angels look upon from heaven. These mysterious and wonderful creatures, they all came because Adam put in a day of work, and Adam slept, and Adam desired something like unto himself. Where was this desire found? It was in Adam's heart. A heart is the beginning of the procreation of the human race. The heart is the beginning of everything by which good spreads throughout the whole world. All good cometh from the heart. Here's Ludolf quotes the Gospel of St. Luke, where he is speaking, our Lord Jesus Christ is speaking, and he says that the good heart produceth, produceth good fruits, and the evil heart produceth evil fruit. For out of the heart, the, 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 out of the abundance of the heart, the, comes the words of the mouth. But it was not possible for Eve to be created until Adam would speak from the abundance of his heart to God. And he spoke from the abundance of his heart to God, and God heard Adam speak that he wanted a creature like unto himself, and therefore Eve flowed forth from his side. Then Zudal says, There are not four, but there are five wombs. And Jesus Christ hangs upon the cross, and the four wombs nail him to the cross. And he cannot move. But his heart is alive. His body is dead, but his heart is not dead. His heart still striveth for life, and his body is asleep, but his heart is not asleep. And what does that magnet first do? It calls together five souls. Five souls are attracted by that magnet. The one is his own mother, who will come to complete the burial. The other is Mary Magdalene. And then Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, the coward and the Pharisee. And there is a soldier named Longinus. And these five are brought back to the cross. Now remember at 3 p.m., what happened? Everyone went away. The soldiers went away. The holy women went away. All left Jesus Christ. They all left his body upon the cross. And they all walked away. And some of them walked away beating their breasts. Some walked away saying <coughs> they were sorry, but these are not saved. Who are those that are saved? They are those by that mysterious power of the magnet from the dead body of Jesus Christ, something inside of that body that pulls souls to come back. One was a wicked soldier. He came back. Another was this Pharisee. He came back. Another was Mary Magdalene, and she came back. Another was the holy priest, John, and he came back, and the mother of God brought them back. And they came back to that place. When they came back, Jesus Christ was not finished with his work until the soldier with his spear pierced the high side of Jesus Christ, and he pierced from the right side, and he created a tunnel from the right side all the way to the left and pierced the heart of Jesus Christ, and out came blood and water, so Ludolf says, note this, that there is a road. There is a door. And the door is in the right side of Jesus Christ. And Longinus opened that door. And then we must pass into it. And go a long ways across the body until we arrive at that most wonderful heart. And from this heart came blood and water. And it came gushing forth. And this is why the soldier believed, because he had, whenever you pierce a dead body, no blood gushes forth. There is no life in a dead body. You pierce a dead body and blood simply doesn't move properly. It has no life in it. But when he pierced that side, the blood gushed forth with great power and violence. And it came forth down the spear and touched the hand of Longinus. And out came blood and water. What was happening here is Azudov. The Lord Jesus Christ is asleep after a day's work. Just like Adam was asleep after a day's work. But Adam's work was so easy. But the new Adam's work was so hard. And God put him to sleep. And from his side came our Holy Mother, the church. From his side came that most beautiful bride. That most wonderful bride whom we call our Holy Bride of Jesus Christ. Who is our Holy Mother, the church. She is the bride of Christ, and the bride came forth from the side of Jesus Christ, just like Adam, Eve came forth from the side of Adam. 
And this bride came forth. And so our Lord, so the, so the spear is pierced to the side. And there are so wonderful things that happen when this bride comes forth. Now there are three things that benefit us, says Ludolf. The first is that Jesus Christ is dead. And only after he is dead do these five souls come back. So likewise, if we are going to find Jesus Christ and enter inside of his body and go into his most wonderful and most sacred heart, we must also be dead. That is, dead to sin and dead to the world. This death must be inside of us. And hence the devotion of this heart is so important. We also remember that there was the will of Christ that his this devotion be spread of the love of his most sacred heart towards the end of times. Because the Lord Jesus Christ's power of his heart was not shown until Good Friday. It is only on this day that we see how wonderful and how powerful is the heart of Jesus Christ. It began to show itself in its magnificent love a holy Thursday night, when by an attraction the priest put his head upon the heart of Jesus Christ. What is the problem of the priesthood today? There are so many troubles. But the greatest trouble is priests don't put their head upon the heart of Jesus Christ. John did not understand. He was not yet Saint John. He was just a young man, newly ordained priest, not yet a saint. But he, what did he do? He knew that there was something more sacred about this night than any other night, and therefore by an attraction, he put his head upon the heart of Jesus Christ, and he listened to his heart. We don't just listen to minds. We don't just listen to words. We must listen to the heart. And so that which is inside the heart of a man comes out through his mouth. Now what is it inside the heart of the evil man? It comes out the mouth. What is inside the heart of a good man? It comes out the mouth. And the Lord Jesus Christ spoke his most beautiful words as he's nailed to that cross, those seven last words, in which are found all the truths that need to be known about what love is, and what truth is, and what life is all about. Father, forgive them, they know not what they do, until the last word of his crying out with a loud voice, a sigh that is experienced by the saints, a sigh in which is contained all love and all perfection, and which is a symbol of the one word that is spoken in heaven as we see God face to face. It is consummated. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. All good comes from this most sacred sigh. But the first requirement is we must be dead. And the second says, Ludolf, from this side comes a church. For Jesus Christ walked this earth as Adam walked it. He looked like Adam. He was an identical twin of Adam. He was a new Adam. And he had the heart of Adam. Only it was a bigger heart. And he said, it is not good to be alone. And the father said down to Jesus Christ, it is not good for the new Adam to be alone. It wasn't good for the old Adam to be alone. It's not good for the new Adam to be alone. And Adam complained to God, the new Adam, and he said, Lord, I want not to be alone in heaven. I want to bring souls with me. I want companions like unto myself. I don't want my nature and my love and my being to enter into other souls that I might carry them into the kingdom of heaven. I want creatures like unto myself to see you face to face. It is not good for man to be alone. And therefore the Father put him to sleep by the sleep of death. By the agony of the cross, and from his side flowed blood and water. This is where the power of the seven sacraments come from. This is where the power of all grace comes from. And we must end as also the play, the, the secret door by which we enter into the kingdom of heaven. We pass through that door of the right side of Jesus Christ to find his heart, which is upon the left side. So it is very important for us to go towards this most sacred heart. But this heart. Well, how does he distribute his divine love? How is it that they came back to the cross, those other four souls? And how is it that the cross goes out to souls? It goes out through the heart of Mary, and also through our feet and our hands. The priest is called another Christ. During the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, I will hold Jesus Christ in my hands. When carrying him to Holy Communion to bring you Jesus Christ upon the tongue, I will carry him with my feet. It is easy to carry with my hands. It's easy to carry with my feet. God gave this power to every priest. But he wants to be carried by the heart. This is not always so done. He must be carried by the heart. For if we have only hands and only feet, 
We can take our hands and give them to Jesus Christ for his hands are nailed to the cross. We can take our feet and carry Christ because his feet stay nailed to the cross. But there is only one heart that must go to the very ends of the earth, and that is his most divine, most wonderful, and most sacred heart. This heart must go to the ends of the earth, and this is what's needed in the great time of battle. This was needed in the time of the death. Our St. John tells us in his holy priesthood, what was happening that Thursday night and that Friday morning and that Friday afternoon? And he says it, Behold, he loved them, and he loved them unto the end. And the Lord Jesus Christ wants this love to be passed into his mystical body. He wants this love to be passed into his saints. And we are all supposed to become saints. We were all meant to be saints. It is not for others to be saints. It's for us to be saints. It is not for others to go and know and love serve God. It's for us to know and love and serve him. And let us enter into his most sacred and most wonderful side. Pass through the door and enter into his heart. And let the blood and water come forth. This is what is needed to solve the crisis in the world today. This was needed to bring back the victory of Christ and throughout the entire world. It's the solution to all the troubles that are around us, including the trouble of Mr. Sleepy Joe Biden stealing the election <laughs> and lying on the landslide victory of Trump. What is the solution? Jesus Christ in his most wonderful and most sacred heart. It is a solution to all troubles. The divine love is poured out. And he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all things to myself. And all things shall come to him. They shall come freely when they are alive. But if they do not freely come when they are alive, they shall come compelled. What is the sound that's going to come from the trumpet of the great angel at the end of days? What's that noise going to come from? It is coming from the heart of Jesus Christ and his humanity. The angel shall blow the trump, but the sound shall come from his heart. And those that hate him and those that are his enemies from the beginning of time to the end, they shall be compelled by the power of that divine heart to meet with the just in the valley of Josephat. And then they shall be judged by that most divine and most sacred heart. And he shall say to those who do not turn to his love in this life, Depart from me, ye cursed, and everlasting fire. And they shall depart, and it shall be everlasting fire, and they shall never return and never be seen again. But those that respond to his love, whether they be cowards and Pharisees like Nicodemus, impure and proud like Mary Magdalene, priests like St. John, or the innocent as the Holy Mother, all must come to him, or soldiers that just simply are trying to do their job and care not about God. They just simply are wicked men of the average sort. And yet they have a little more viciousness in their hearts than what we thought they had. The viciousness that made Longinus pierce the side of our Lord. But all these souls can come be brought back to Christ. All can come back to him. But we must do so in this life. We cannot wait until the next. And so we consecrate our seminary. When all the seminarians of the most sacred heart of Jesus Christ, the crested by Our Lady, Our Lord, 300 years ago. And so we, we, we make this request at the fulfillment as a family, as a father of the seminary, and as a father of the seminarians. And the, with the seminarians together, we'll make this consecration of our seminary to the Immaculate Heart, to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, along with the Immaculate Heart of Mary, as these two hearts go together. The left side of the heart and the right side of the heart, they are the Immaculate and the Sacred Hearts. And these two hearts cannot be ever separated one from another. And also, there in Boston, Kentucky, we'll make this consecration on December the 8th. We'll begin the 30 days tomorrow, tonight, the eve of the first day, and then tomorrow, the first day of the 30 days, and the 30th day on December the 8th, we'll make this holy consecration. Those of us who join us may do so. We have a, uh, the book we use is, it's easy, I guess it's available on the internet. You can get it and print it out or use it from the internet. It's the, the Ancient Devotions of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. By the Carthusian monks, written from the 14th, 14th to the 17th century. So the ancient devotion to the Sacred Heart, written by great Carthusian monks, and they speak about what is the power and the wonder of this most holy heart and the wound in the side of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, in any case, so we'll begin that tomorrow and continue until each day until the uh, December the 8th, and then uh, and then uh, the, and that day, of course, also is our principal feast day for the Society of Saint Pius X. And, of course, we have our renewal of our engagements, those making their first engagements, and uh, in the society as well on that day. 
And then remember that the sacred and immaculate heart cannot be separated one from another. And lastly, in this, remember the rule about the sacred heart. Father Urban Snyder, who mentioned many times, priest there in Kentucky, a Kentucky pilgrim who was a stay, stay with the Latin Mass and tradition until he died in 1995. He died of Alzheimer's. And in the last years of his life, he didn't realize that he preached the same sermon every week. Every week he gave the same sermon over and over again. And he couldn't remember that he did. But every week he would stand in the pulpit as he was going down from his Alzheimer's. And he would say, keep your eye on heaven as the end and goal of life. There is even a place in purgatory where those that do not love heaven desire heaven enough. But if you want to go to heaven, you cannot go to heaven unless you love the most sacred heart. But there is no heart that is able to love the sacred heart as it should be loved, except for the heart of our Holy Mother. Therefore, ask the Blessed Virgin Mary to give you her heart with which to love her son. But there is a problem. Because no one can love the heart of Mary as it should be loved, except for her son. Therefore, ask Jesus Christ to give us his heart with which to love his mother. And with these two hearts, we find our way to the kingdom of heaven. Each week he said those words, not knowing he had said it the week before. But they remain true. These are the two hearts in which all things of happiness are found. We must embrace these holy hearts. My heart must be left behind. My heart must be, my heart is loving too much the wrong things. My heart does not love the things of God. Therefore, let it be forgotten. Let the Holy Mother give me her heart, that I might love her son. And let Jesus Christ give me his heart, that I might love his mother. And these hearts are the ones that must reside inside of me. And then we can carry Jesus Christ and his Holy Mother to the very ends of the earth. This is what's needed in our time of crisis. The faith must be in our blood. The faith must be in our hearts. And it must be carried to the extremities of the earth. But it cannot be carried without a heart that has two parts, left and right side, of the Holy Mother and her Immaculate Heart and her most beloved Son and his most sacred heart. Let these hearts be inside of us. And no matter what faults I have, they will be forgotten. Whatever enemies, they shall be vanquished. Whatever obstacles, they shall be overcome. And there shall be great glory and happiness at the end. It's well worth it. Let these two hearts reside inside of us. Let's bag the grace that they come inside of us, stay inside the most sacred and immaculate heart, and never depart until we are united, our whole body and soul, with those two wonderful hearts in the kingdom of heaven, with all the saints forever. We really bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.